good afternoon. Um, I have only 10 minutes to talk about diagnosis and, and, and staging of cervical and ovarian cancer, so it will be a bit of a rapid fire. But I'll try and cover um, within this short span of time as much as I can. So, coming directly to cervical cancer staging, um, the cervical cancer stage has been revised very recently and there have been some drastic changes that has been made in the staging of cervical cancer, which I'm going to mention in this talk. Um, I'm not focusing on the diagnosis too much because, uh, as we all know, for any, any cancer, the gold standard of diagnosis is a biopsy, uh, so I'm not going to go into details. There are images, tumor markers, and everything, which will be um, adjunct to the main diagnosis, but I mean the core thing, except a few, few cases, the core thing will be a, a biopsy from the tissue to make a diagnosis. So in stage one cervical cancer, uh, it has been divided into stage one A and one B. It's, it's a disease limited to the cervix. Stage one A is microscopic disease. Stage one B is macroscopic disease. And in one A, uh, again subdivided into one A1 and one A2. One A1 is less than three millimeter in size, uh, in, in, in depth of invasion. And more than three millimeters, less than five millimeters is um, depth of invasion makes it stage 1A2. 1B is again subclassified into B1, B2 and B3. This is different from the previous classification. I'll come to that a little later. Um, B1 is a tumor size which is more than 1A2 but less than 2 cm in the greatest dimension. 1B2 is between 2 to 4 cm. 1B3 is more than uh, 4 cm in the, in the greatest dimension. Stage 2 remained almost the same, uh, it didn't change. Stage 2 is disease gone beyond the cervix but not uh, any distant spread. So if it has involved the upper part of the vagina then it is stage 2A1 and if it has involved the parametrium then it is, uh, sorry stage 2B. So 2A is uh, involvement of the upper vagina and 2B is the involvement of the parametrium. 2A is again subclassified as 2A1 and 2A2, again depending on the size of the tumor, if it is less than 4 centimeters, then it is 2A1, um, more than 4 centimeters is 2A2. So what is the difference? The change that has been made previously, that in the, uh, up to the 2009 uh, cervical staging, it has been a clinical staging and there has been a lot of debate, a lot of deliberation about the clinical staging because it was said that cervical cancer is a cancer of the poorer countries. You cannot afford to have imaging and other modalities of diagnosis, so it should be should remain as a clinical staging. But finally, uh, FIGO decided uh, under the leadership of Dr. Nija Vatla to change it to um, a proper radiological staging which we are, which we are doing uh, in, in most of our tertiary centers. So if the staging is done through radiology, we will use uh, uh, within brackets R or sometimes it's done after um, surgery, then the word P will be used to denote which type of staging has been used. The other change that has happened is stage 1A. So previously lateral spread of up to 70 millimeters was considered stage 1A. This has now been removed because the, there's no difference in the treatment outcome whether the lateral spread was more than 7 or not. It's more important that it is less than 3 millimeter or less than 5 millimeter in depth of invasion. That was more important. So lateral spread was not considered in the new 2018 classification um, stage. In 1B1, uh, previously it was 1B1 and 1B2, less than 4 cm and more than 4 cm and now we know through many various studies that the size 2 cm is actually more important compared to 4 cm and the treatment outcomes and the modality of treatment are different. So it has been subclassified into B1, B2 and B3. It's less than 2 cm is B1, 1B1, 1B2 is between 2 and 4 cm, 1B3 is more than 4 cm. Coming to the higher stages, um, stage 3. Now th there is again a, a, a gross change that has happened in, st in stage 3. Stage 3 means cervix, the, the cancer has spread beyond um, the, the, the scope of 1B. So it has involved the lateral pelvic wall or this is the more important part that has involved the lymph nodes. So lymph node metastasis is now considered as part of the staging in cervical cancer. If it is cardiotic lymph node metastasis then it stages 3C1. If it is um, pelvic and then parotid is stage 3C2. 
stage four hasn't changed much from the 2009 classification. For four A <coughs> is split to adjacent pelvic organs, <coughs> which is the rectum and the and the bladder. Now, mind you that just um, bullous edema of the bladder is not considered as a um, invasion of the bladder. You'll have to have a biopsy proven um, metastasis of the bladder mucosa to call it a stage four A. Four B. If, if they are spread to distant organs, in, even in the, in the abdominal cavity. So that is what the change that has happened from 2009 to 2018, that nodal metastasis was not considered in 2009 because the diagnosis uh, abilities were not there, were not considered. So now we have got a th stage 3C um, in, in cervical cancer staging. C1 is pelvic node metastasis, C2 is paraortic node metastasis and we are using within parenthesis R for if, if, if I diagnose the nodal involvement through MRI or CT scan then it will be um, 1C, uh, 3CR or if I have done a, uh, a surgery for uh, cervical cancer and I, on the pathology report I pick up a metastatic lymph node then it becomes a stage 3CP. Uh, That's how it is classified. So how we stage, as, I mean, just one slide for the diagnosis, of course, um, you need to do a very thorough clinical examination um, because you know, the, the examination of the neck and examination of the axilla are equally important as the examination of the pelvis because you may miss a, a supraclavicular node if you don't examine the patient properly. Then, of course, imaging comes in. Uh, CT, I mean, the protocol at Tata Medical Center, we use a CT scan of the thorax and upper abdomen and MRI of the pelvis, but this is not uniformly required depending on the resources availability you have to choose wisely as we are talking about it that of course we can make a diagnosis with a, a good quality CT scan ultrasound has been proposed but it is not as good as a CT scan and sometimes leads to misdiagnosis previously used examination anesthetics cystoscopy proctoscopy are seldom necessary the only one reason I will do a cystoscopy in a patient with cervical cancer if it is diagnosed on our imaging as 4a to confirm that if there is disease in this in, in the um, in the bladder, we can do a cystoscopy. And occasionally we do UA to take the final call on the mode of treatment. Coming to ovarian cancer, so FIGO staging was revised in 2014 um, for ovarian cancer. Um, I, I didn't go into much details about diagnosis because that takes another half an hour to talk about, about ovarian cancer diagnosis. Suffici sufficient is to say is that you have to have a tissue diagnosis. You cannot treat ovarian cancer just on the basis of a cytological diagnosis of, a, of an adenocarcinoma and then you see on the image there is a mass in the ovary. 20-25% of the ovarian masses are actually secondary cancers. You are, you are treating inappropriately if you are basing your treatment just because of that diagnosis. So tissue diagnosis is compulsory for ovarian cancer. Um, the stage again, uh, stage one is localized to the ovary, 1A limited to one ovary, 1B is limited to both ovaries, capsule is intact, there's no uh, ascites, there's no peritoneal washing, they're all negative, uh, both in 1A and 1B. In 1C, if there is a surgical spill, so if during the surgery you have made a spill, uh, inadvertently or knowingly, whichever way you do, if there is a surgical spill, it becomes 1C1. 1C2, if the capsule is breached, um, or ruptured due before the surgery was done and 1C3 if you find malignant cells in the ascetic fluid. It will be very rare to find a 1C2 tumor because majority of the time if there is a tumor invasion in the capsule you already have cells in the peritoneal cavity. So 1C2 is a very rare entity but it has been there and 1C3 of course uh, more common uh, finding in, in early stage ovarian cancers. Stage 2 um, the disease confined to the to the uh, pelvic on pelvis only if it's implants on the uterus then we call it uh, stage 2a and if the disease is on the peritoneum peritoneal surface of the bladder or the rectum or sometimes the loop of sigmoid colon which has come below the pelvic brain then we can call it a uh, stage 2b mural invasion of these two organs actually constitute stage 4 so be very careful when you are staging them stage 2b is only peritoneal surface deposit stage 3 is a bit more complicated um, which has been subdivided into stage 3 A, B and C. A is again A1 and A2 and A1 is again subclassified into A1, 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 2 like that. So stage 3 A1 if you find positive retroperitoneal lymph nodes only. There is no uh, other evidence of disease anywhere else. 
um, and the node is less than 10 millimeter in size then you call it 3A11 if it is more than 10 millimeter in size you call it 3A12 if it's only uh, retroperitoneal lymph node metastasis 1A2 is microscopic extraperitoneal disease that means you do your surgery you have taken the momentum out didn't think there was any disease the pathologist told, tells you that there was micrometastasis in the momentum so this becomes then a stage 3a2 stage 3b there is macroscopic deposit but the deposits are less than two centimeter in size um, you get quite a quite a few cases like this we get small mediary deposits which are less than two centimeter in size but um, seen uh, seen on, uh, on on naked eye examination stage 3c same with um, the tumor size more than two centimeters so this will also include if you have deposits on the liver surface on the Gleason's capsule if you have deposits at the um, at, at the um, hilum of the of the spleen they're all stage 3c disease however if the disease has penetrated into the um, liver parenchyma spleen or the uh, uh, intramurally into any intestine then it becomes stage 4 so Stage four is distant metastasis. Uh, the, the, um, if you have pleural effusion, which is proven positive on cytology, you call it stage four A. Stage four B is parenchymal metastasis um, to extra abdominal organs. So you can have supraclavicular nodes, inguinal nodes, and um, parenchymal liver or splenic or any other organs metastasis. Now there's one area which I'm, I'm personally confused about is now we have got such a good uh, modality of imaging that we don't not only identify plural effusion we also identify plaque plaques on the on the plural surface i'm not sure which way to be because the plural effusion happens because there's disease on the plural so but again this is not quite exactly fitting into plural effusion only we still uh, as, as an institution policy putting it as 4a but that is something uh, I, I have suggested to uh, Nija to look into so what that part should be called. So if there is plural plaque identified on the CT scan, whether we call it as 4A or 4B disease, I'm not sure. But if, if there's a plural diffusion, of course, it's 4A. Um, ovarian cancer staging is by surgery, so that is how diagnosis is made. Uh, and, and a comprehensive staging surgery is necessary. Um, we have to have cytology and histopathology and staging surgery will involve not only just uh, 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 just THBS omentectomy that's far out of the window now we have to have a comprehensive look into the entire abdominal cavity look at each and every nook and corner of the peritoneal <coughs> folds and find disease and make sure that it, you're, you're comprehensively staging uh, you can do fertility preservation but staging by looking at the entire peritoneal surface is most important and taking biopsies uh, you need to do a complete omentectomy and lymph node dissection required if it is in early stage if you think. Radiological staging is acceptable in certain stages especially when you are actually planning for new adjuvant chemotherapy. Uh, CT scan is, is good enough you do not always need I mean not necessarily need a PET scan to stage uh, ovarian cancer especially if you are planning to new adjuvant chemotherapy it's best, best to um, do the staging um, before the, the treatment on CT scan only and there are algorithms are being prepared to be able to actually um, uh, to, to estimate the amount of disease that is the, the woman is harboring. So that's all about staging and diagnosis. I hope I finished within time. So I'll uh, um, have the next speaker.